right, good morning, City Light family. Welcome to church. Um, as usual, if you're in a home group or a family group, I just want to bless you where you're at. I know some of you guys are watching from far away. We've got people watching in uh, America and India and different parts of here, Europe and uh, parts of Slovakia as well. And it's just want to, you know, big welcome to you guys, blessings to you guys. Um, we're going to just jump into a, just a time of worship. Uh, and we we'll get into the word as well. But before we do that, let's just pray us uh, in. Let's just get our hearts right before the Lord. So let's do that. Lord, we just want to acknowledge that you are amazing, Lord. We want to receive from you, Lord, this Sunday morning. We want to just hear what you have to say. We want to touch you, Lord, and have you touch our hearts, Lord. We want to just honor you in the things that we do, the things that we say, the songs that we sing this morning, Lord. Um, Lord, just help us to be uh, just a real intimate moment, Lord. Even if it's, despite the fact that it's through the screen and, and that we're not to, gathering together um, because of this lockdown and all these things, Lord, but we just, we appeal to you, Lord. We ask that you would meet with us by your spirit, Lord. That would be sweet fellowship now. And we pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen, and amen, and amen. Hey guys, be blessed, enjoy the service.
us look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes to the hillside where justice and mercy embrace there the sun We don't have any study materials as of now. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to find it. 
Yeah. So did any of you guys pray for it? No, no. we didn't. And Gabe, did you pray for it? No, I don't know how to pray. Oh, okay. Let's fix that, guys. Dude says he doesn't know how to pray. So how is he going to pray if he doesn't know how to pray? Let's. How do you guys pray? What's, what does prayer mean to you? I just think that prayer has to be precise and it just should be towards the Lord. For me, so I think prayer needs to be honest. Like you need to open your heart to God. Open mm -hmm. heart, okay. Well, I think that prayer is like submitting to God. I just ask God to take control over my life. So, submitting, honest, precise. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think that means those are all great reasons for praying and great ways of praying. But uh, let's also see what you know what Jesus has to say. So, in Matthew chapter six. Gabe it says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. So like, it's exactly what you said about being honest, you know. It says, they love to pray in the synagogues and on the streets. But he says, I tell you the truth, they've already received their reward. But when you go pray, pray in your room. Uh, close the door, pray to your father. Just have a personal conversation with your father uh, who is unseen. And then your father's gonna hear you, and he's gonna see you, and uh, what's done in secret, and he's gonna reward you. So, you know, maybe you don't feel comfortable praying with everyone, don't worry about it, just pray in your room, pray by yourself, God's gonna hear you. It says when you pray, uh, don't go babbling, just don't talk forever and ever and ever, you know, just get to the point, be precise, you know. Um, Sometimes we want to say a lot of words and think like it's like magic or something, but you know, he says, just get to the point. Um, your father already knows what you, what you need, and he just wants to hear from you. And then he says to his disciples, his friends, he says, this is how you should pray. He says, our father who are in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think that's exactly what you were saying, right? Just uh, that you would submit yourself to, to God's will. And so that's all we're doing is just submitting this crazy school project to the Lord, you know? And uh, he says he's gonna give us our daily bread. He's gonna give us our daily nourishment, but he's also gonna give us our daily inspiration for our exam and things like that. He's gonna give you what you need because he knows what you need. Um, it says forgive our mistakes, our debts, as we forgive our debtors. So you know, maybe that's another good thing to add in here. This stuff. Um, and then it says, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Right? So maybe even in the school project, there's going to be some temptation to maybe cheat because it's at the last minute. Uh, maybe a little plagiarism, like whatever you know, just that the Lord would lead us away from that, you know, that he would provide that solution. Right. So, hey, do you kind of understand, like, just to be in your prayers, just to be honest, be precise, just be submitting? Do you want to maybe pray for this exam, for this, this project? Do you think you could do it? Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As it is in heaven Our Father in heaven Lead us not into temptation God deliver us There is nothing but nothing more powerful than prayer. And prayer is not a desirable extra in the Christian life. It's commanded by God 
to be essential in everything we do. God says, here's my command. I want you to talk to me about everything. How good is your prayer life? Do we understand we're going to talk to God, the architect, the most powerful creator of everything in the universe? And he says, come and talk to me. Tell me what you want. No one has power with God who doesn't pray. And the question is, we're living in a society that has got us boundaried by all these demands of things we think we got to do. And the question is, do you pray? It is the most powerful thing in the universe. Nothing can take the place of prayer. It doesn't matter whether you've been saved 50 years, five years, or five minutes. God says, come to my throne room and talk to me. All right, City Life family, let's jump into our teaching time. We just want to open up with a word of prayer just so we get our hearts right as we approach God's word. So let's do that. Lord, just thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the amazing one, Lord, and you are the one who desires to communicate yourself to us. So you're not a silent God, Lord. You're a God who is constantly speaking words of wisdom and words of life over us, Lord. And we want to approach your word, approach your scriptures as holy, Lord, as something that has life in it, Lord, and something that we must live by, Lord. And so just help these words that we uh, explore today not to be hollow or empty, but to be full and beautiful and just, as David said, honey on our lips, Lord. Uh, just help that to be our heart's desire this morning as we get into your word. We pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. 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 So as you guys know, the topic is prayer. We're going to be looking from Matthew chapter 6. And this is just a continuation of these teachings that Jesus is giving to the crowds and to his disciples. And as I was reading through these scriptures about prayer and about fasting, the thing that hit me the most, the thing that kind of just jumped out at me, and I think this is the Holy Spirit just saying, this is, hey, this is highlighting, this is what you need to talk about. It and it's when Jesus says repeatedly, he says, when you pray or when you fast. And that just kind of hit me that Jesus assumes that we will be praying and he assumes that we will be fasting and he wants us to do it well. It's not a matter of if we want to pray or if we want to fast, but it's when we will do it. And so let's do it well. Now, Jesus starts out his uh, teaching to this group of people who really, like our skit earlier, didn't know how to pray. You know, maybe they didn't know that they didn't know how to pray, but they didn't know how to pray. And so he's going to call out a few things that were kind of extremes in their culture and things that were wrong in their prayer life. And these, honestly, are still things in our own ways, problems in our personal prayer life today. So no different 2,000 years later, not a big difference, same issues, same extreme. So let's look at those. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. It says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. And truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So in this statement, Jesus points out, two extremes, two extremes. And these are the same extremes that we deal with today. And I would call the first one kind of a religious extreme, a religious extreme. It's this extreme that um, uses religion as a platform to be seen. And it's, as Jesus says, it's hypocrisy. 
this prayer where the people would go into the synagogue or the people would go into the streets the people would go into public places and they would pray you know and they would be charismatic and they would be very loud and they would be essentially gathering the attention create using prayer as a platform to self glorify them you know to get people to notice to get people to think about them and how spiritual they were and how good they were and they would be praying these passionate prayers and Jesus calls it on he calls it hypocrisy he calls it hypocrisy he says you know what you're not praying to God anymore you're praying to these people and you're not glorifying God you're glorifying yourself and he says don't do it that's not the way to pray if you want to pray go in secret go privately just get before you and the father and he will reward you now the second uh, extreme in prayer and some of us fall into this is this kind of pagan prayer this kind of ritualistic prayer and he says you know don't go like the pagans don't be babbling on and on and on and on you've been on those prayer meetings where someone's gonna just be praying they're like praying for an hour right and they just go on and on and on and every detail and everything up and down and all around right and it's almost like they're trying to use these words and if they just pack enough spiritual words and religious words that they will somehow twist the arm of God that God will do what they want him to do and you know what Jesus says this is not how it works you don't need to twist the arm of God to get him to answer your prayers. You don't need to bombard him with a million words for him to pay attention. And you know, sometimes this kind of pagan prayer looks really spiritual. You know those people who just, you know, they say these prayers, they sound just so beautiful, they're so poetic, right? And God says, you know, I don't need that. I don't need that. I know what you need. You don't need to do that to get my attention. And a bit later on, Jesus is going to mention fasting. It's going to be the same basic two extremes where sometimes people were fasting and they try to look like they're fasting. They try to look like they're hungry and look like they're suffering and look like they're doing something spiritual, right? Doing something religious to get people's attention that people would look at them and say, oh wow, you're such a good spiritual person, right? You're fasting, I wish I could fast, you know? Uh, and they're self-promoting, self-elevating. And you know, whenever we do that, we are putting the amazing God of the universe lower and lower and lower in our hearts and our minds. And the other extreme in fasting is, you know, some people we approach fasting as if I'm doing something to earn God's favor, that if I am hungry enough, if I'm suffering enough, that God will have to listen to me and God will have to do what I want him to do. And Jesus says, this is not the way. You will not be rewarded this way. This is not how to get God's attention and God's approval and God's blessing. It doesn't work this way. And in both our prayer and our fasting, Jesus gives us one piece of golden advice. Beautiful advice. He says, do it in secret. Do it in secret. Don't show off. When you pray, go to your closet. Go to that private place. When you fast, put on some oils. Kind of do up your hair. Dress nicely. Don't look like you're fasting. Do it in secret. It is not a show. It is a moment, whether you're fasting or praying, where you're coming before the creator of the universe openly and honestly, privately, and you are starting a conversation with him. You're starting a dialogue. And it's not just you pushing yourself and elevating yourself and manipulating, but receiving and relating and letting God get your heart and you tuning in to his. And on that concept of the secret place, uh, I just encourage you, if you didn't watch the uh, City Light sermon last week with Benson, uh, please do. The link is actually here below. Just uh, follow that and uh, check out that wonderful teaching because Benson goes into a lot of detail about the blessings and the benefits of doing things in secret. Okay, so do check that out, okay? 
But let's move on because Jesus doesn't just criticize their prayer life in these two extremes. He actually gives them a roadmap for having a wonderful, beautiful, blessed prayer life. So let's look at that right now, okay? This passage of scripture is the same passage that we did the little skit on earlier, right? Where Gabriel's asking how to pray. And I think that's actually a question that a lot of people have, how to pray. Uh, it must be because there's tons of books on it. There's tons of lectures on it. There's You can find so many resources. But it's funny is that we have this mountain of resources of how to pray, yet we so often don't pray. And we so often don't feel like we know how to pray. And, you know, and we're missing out on so much. And just like in that skit, we asked around the table, you know, how do you pray? And the answers were beautiful. And by the way, those were actually just their honest answers. It wasn't staged. It was be precise, be honest, be submitting, right? And you'll see that in this passage and a whole lot more. So let's just go dive deep in it. And let's look, there's five kind of steps, five ways that we can pray and, uh, and it's good if we can put all of them into our prayer life daily okay so let's look at them together this is how Jesus says how we are to pray when you pray do it like this when you pray do it like this this then is how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name and Jesus starts out this model prayer with our father who is in heaven our Father who is in heaven. And I think that's a great way to start the prayer in the sense that we need to be starting a conversation. That is really what we're about. It's not a, prayer is not this pedestal to get attention from others. Prayer is not this means of manipulating God. It is this conversation with your heavenly Father. You're speaking to your Father, your ultimate Father. You're speaking to our Father, the Father of all of us. You're speaking to the Father of all creation, right? Who is in the heavenly realms. And that should floor you. That should humble you a bit, right? But that should also enthrall you. That should excite you, right? That you can have a relationship. You can have a conversation whenever you want with the creator of all of this. 
that blows my mind that God would want to have a conversation with you and he would have had a conversation with me and I can have it any time I want right he's not too busy for you and I think it's always good when we pray just to remind ourselves who we're actually talking to we are talking to our father and it's and he is a good good father he is not against you he is for you he's attentive he's ready to receive you and receive from you and also to speak to you and you know you don't have to convince him you don't have to try to twist his arm with your words he actually wants to do things for you and he's already declared that he wants to do things for you Jesus will give a parable later kind of a saying says you know if you earthly fathers know how to give good gifts how much more does your heavenly father know how to give and that is so true God wants to lavish you with his blessings and he's got everything the whole universe is his so he's got so many resources he just wants to pour out on you and so many things he wants to speak over your life if you just come to him just come to him and I believe as we come in prayer with this attitude of just meeting with our father with Abba father that he will reveal himself as such if you have this idea about God that is not clear it is not maybe loving it is not accepting you know just come humbly that way and he will begin to reveal himself to you through prayer through that relationship of his characteristics he will begin to work on your behalf he will begin to answer those prayers and those requests and he will prove himself as your good father and I just want to encourage you a few weeks ago actually Lubos spoke extensively on this so again there's gonna be another link for a teaching below and please if you want to learn about the heart of the father go check that teaching out it's a great teaching you're gonna be encouraged okay so do that and I know that personally about God revealing his heart to me um, and just revealing his characteristics to me I mean last few weeks just there's been a few nights where I've just woken up and he's just just kind of having conversation with him you know and nothing religious nothing super spiritual but just talking with God you know and it's been so cool he's just been reminding me of just how wonderfully blessed I am from him you know and it's just it was like he was going through this list of I've blessed you here I've done this for you I've done that for you I've done this for you and it just reminded me so clearly you know God you are so so good you're so perfect towards me you're so kind towards me and I just kind of left the whole conversation with God is just humble like you know who am I that you would love me who am I that you would do any of this for me and it just speaks of his goodness and it just speaks of his goodness so I just encourage you enter into that kind of prayer just enter into this moment of God I want to I want to know you as the father your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and the second kind of step in this roadmap of prayer is invitation. Invitation. Jesus says, goes on and says, Your kingdom, God the Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a beautiful invitation, you know, where you're inviting this good, amazing, blessing giving God into your life and you want his kingdom that good kingdom that good authority and rule and power to not just to remain in heaven but to actually come down here on earth to invade your life to fill your life to fill your family and your city and your nation and this earth you know what a wonderful invitation it's like kind of rolling out the red carpet and say God you are welcome here come do whatever you want we want to receive fully from you please do that now wonderful invitation and you know what God likes those invitations and he responds to those invitations and that's it's like he's always just kind of waiting you know I see that in my own life many times where God's you know I'm, I'm in a situation I'm trying to figure out on my own strength trying to calculate all the things all the scenarios and God's just kind of like 
you know, when are you going to ask me to help? You know, you know, and and when you do, it's just like he's just so eager to just jump in there and do it, and he will come up with solutions and he will come up with things that you cannot even imagine. You know, that's why in Corinthians says, you know, no eye see, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the good things that God has in store for those who love him and whom he loves, you know, and just test it, try it, invite him. And as you invite him, he's going to do his will. You know, God has, actually has a will. He has a direction and he wants to do his will. And as he does his will in your life, in the life of your family, in the life in the life around you, you will see that it is good, it is perfect, and it is pleasing. It is amazing. So just invite God to do that. But the real question, I think, for many of us, and it's maybe not a question that we think about, but it's somewhere in us, is, and, and the, the question is this, do we actually really want that? Do we want that? Because I think many times we want a little bit of God kind of on the side. You know, we want my life plus God on Sunday, you know, or plus God when I really, really need him, you know. We don't necessarily want God's will to invade our life every moment. And there's some areas we don't, we completely shut off to God. We don't even invite him there. You know, we, we in fact, we board that area up and, and, and kind of try to kind of push him away from those certain areas, right? Certain um, lifestyle choices, certain sins, certain decisions, certain uh, relationships. We don't even want God to be in there, right? We don't want his will done here, you know? And you know, question that, work on that in your heart. And if you got those things, those areas where you're just, you know, I don't really want God's intervention here, bring those in prayer and, and just wrestle with those things with God and begin to slowly ask him by the power of the Holy Spirit to help you release those things and allow him to come in to those areas of your life and watch what he will do. Watch what he because God desires that we would invite him. We would invite him into our lives. He's a gentleman, you know. He's not going to push his way in. He's not going to manipulate you and try to get into a relationship and force his will upon you. But he wants you to invite his will into your life. He wants you to invite his authority and his power and his blessings into your life. And it's really a question is, will we do it? Will we do it? Give us today our daily bread. So prayer is conversation, it is invitation, but it is also what we're going to call supplication. Supplication. I'm going to read a little bit further in this prayer, in this model prayer. Jesus says, give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And supplication is really just coming before God and being humble. And just saying, you know, I got needs. I've got things that need to be paid for. I've got food that needs to be put on the table, you know. I've got problems that need to be dealt with, you know. I've got resources that need to come in. A bank account that's pretty empty right now. God, what can you do with this, you know. And just like in those verses, you know, give us our daily bread, you know. And I believe that God just wants us to, just like in those verses, you know, just come to Him daily. Come to Him daily. Every single day. Just come to him and say, God, I need your provision. I need your protection. I need your presence. I need your resources. I need whatever you got for me. And just make that a regular practice. It's not just a once a month thing or a when I'm in really desperate need, but it's a all the time thing. It's a I need you daily. I need you moment by moment by moment to provide. And we got this wonderful example. It's in First uh, Kings chapter 17, where Elijah, uh, he's invited God into his life. He's invited, he's, he's having this conversation, and he's invited God's will into his life. And God's will has led Elijah into some pretty crazy situations. And now he's basically running away uh, to save his life because he's created a lot of enemies because of following God's will. And God tells him, you know, go down to this little, out into the wilderness, this beautiful story where God will bring these ravens, and these ravens will just be coming daily, and just bringing 
bread, literally, to Elijah and sustaining him. And I know in our, in my own family and in my own walk with Jesus, you know, he's taken us through some pretty crazy things and he's told us to do some pretty s stuff that didn't make sense and sometimes didn't make sense financially, you know, but the Lord has blessed those things, you know, he's provided so much. And, and I'm looking at my finances this last year and I'm wondering like, you know, how do I have all that I have and how do I have this provision? You know, it doesn't make so the numbers don't match up. Yet God has just poured out his blessings. He's provided for me and for my family. And I know he's provided for many of you. I know during this corona time it's been tough for a lot of us and it's just been amazing to see him bringing his ravens, his bringing people to just drop the daily bread and drop the blessings upon you and me. And we have such a good, good father. Just want, you know, he wants to lavish his provision upon us if we would just ask. And again, I want to remind you, the same reminder that Jesus gave is, you know, focus those prayers of supplication, those prayers of asking for provision to God himself, to God himself. I know sometimes many, you know, we'll send out prayer requests or we'll be in a prayer meeting, we'll be praying for some need, right? And really, I mean, sometimes you get to a point where you're not praying to God anymore, but you're just kind of praying to the people around you and just hoping that they'll hear what you have to say and they'll somehow have sympathy and help you out, you know? And, um, you know, that's not the way. That's not the way. You know, when you pray, come to the Father and just ask Him for your daily bread. Ask Him for what you need. And let's ask with faith. Faith that He's actually going to provide. That He's actually going to answer those requests. That He may use other people, but you don't necessarily need those other people. You need to address God the Father. I love this example of the life of George Mueller. If you don't know him, go look him up. He's a wonderful saint, you know, and basically he was a kind of a missionary in Bristol, England. And he, through the course of his life, took care of about 10,000 orphans. And he did a bunch of other ministries, a wonderful saint of, the, of Jesus. But anyways, he was a man of prayer and he believed that God would answer prayers. And you know, it takes a lot of money and resources to take care of kids, right? Especially when it's like 10,000 kids, you know. Um, now it wasn't always 10,000 at one time, but anyways, you get the point. And he just had this vibrant, beautiful prayer life because he knew that God was a good, good father. And he knew that God had called him to take care of these children. And so there's this wonderful story, and this is just one of like hundreds of stories that are recorded where He's with this group of kids, and I don't know, it's like, say 20, 30 kids, you know, and they're all around the table, and it's dinner time, and there's no food. And yeah, he says, sit down, kids, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. And they prayed these prayers, you know, just, Abba Father, you know, bring us what we need. Bring us our daily bread. And as they're praying, they get this knock on the door, and someone brings them some bread. And they're, of course, they're thankful. And then they continue praying. And then, turns out, there's this milk truck that, uh, or carriage or whatever, that uh, breaks down in front of the orphanage. And they, you know, they, all this milk is gonna go bad, so they just decide to give it to the orphanage. The same God, the same Abba Father that Mueller was praying to, that is the same one that you and I need to be praying to and that we will believe by faith that He is a good Father and He will take care of us. And it may seem so crazy, you know, like, like this situation in George's life where, you know, they're praying around an empty table, no food, but God will provide. God will provide if it's according to His will. He will provide for you, okay? So I just encourage you, reach out to Him, invite Him, watch Him do the amazing. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We've talked about having a conversation with our Father. We've talked about inviting Him and inviting His will and His power. We've talked about supplication. And now I want to talk about restoration, restoration. You know, the reality is we live in a broken world. We live in a, a, a environment where there are broken relationships, broken relationships between the people around us, between us 
and the Father. And we need to give space in our prayer to let Jesus restore, let the Father heal, let the Spirit rebuild. And so I just wanna read what Jesus says. He says, in our prayers, we should say this, and forgive us our debts, forgive us our mistakes, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So restoration, you know, restoration is really just getting honest with God. Remember, this is, uh, it's not done in the public necessarily. It's just in that secret place. It's just stripping away all your hangups and all of your pride and all of those things that we try to prop ourselves up with and saying, you know, I messed up. I didn't match up. I'm in debt and I need you. I need you. I need you to restore me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to bring your freedom in my life. And maybe you're struggling with someone else, you know, and you might need to invite that restoration as well, Lord. You know, bring healing in my marriage, bring healing in my parenting, bring healing in the relationships I have with those I work with or those I serve, you know. Bring healing, forgive me. And that it's humbling, right? But, you know, you're standing before the creator of the universe who loves you. It's humbling, but it's completely freeing. It's completely freeing, right? And it's a restoration that doesn't just deal with you and the Father, but you and the Father and everyone around you, right? He says, you need to be forgiving those around you as well. Um, and he also goes on, Jesus says, you know, pray that we would not be led into temptation, you know, that God would lead us in the right way and that we would invite him to lead us in the right way and that we would invite him to protect us from the evil one. And that's just that reality, that reminder that there is an evil one out there. There is a hater of your soul, but that's okay because you can appeal to the lover of your soul to protect you. And God will be your hero. God will be your savior. He will be your Messiah. And he wants to be those things for you. Just invite him. Just invite him. Invite him to be the hero of your day. Daily, every single moment. And we come to our fifth and our last point in this kind of journey of prayer. And it's this, pray with confidence. Pray with confidence. Jesus says, all these kind of as a conclusion of all the things that we've talked about, it says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know, we need to pray with that kind of confidence. You just pray that, you know, all these things, all these things that I prayed for will happen because God, you and you alone have the kingdom. You and you alone have the power. You and you alone are the most glorious one and you can do it, right? There's no amount of religious prayer that can produce what we've just talked about. There's no amount of pagan babbling and arm twisting of God that can produce what we've just spoken about. None of those things, those extremes that Jesus addressed at the beginning, will produce 
what we just talked about, what Jesus says we need to experience when we pray, none of those things will happen unless you're talking to the creator of the universe who has the kingdom, who has the glory, who has the power. And then we end with the word, amen, which is just a fancy way of saying, let it be, let it be. Invite God to say, yes, I want this to happen. I want you to do this, Lord. Please do it. Please do it. So let's approach our Father, our good Father, with confidence. With confidence. I'm going to read a scripture for you. It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Let us approach God, God's throne of grace, with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. God wants us to come to Him confidently. You know, it's just like in your own homes. You know, you don't ask permission to come into the house. You just come into the house, you take off your shoes, you relax, you're yourself, you go into the fridge, take whatever you like. It's that kind of confidence of familiarity. And I think that God wants us to have that. You know, we can come to Him because He's our Father and He's welcomed, welcomed us and He's inviting us. And so let's come to Him boldly. Let's come to Him with confidence, knowing that we will receive grace. We will receive mercy. We will receive all the things that we need because He alone has the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. So I just want to conclude our teaching real quick. Um, you know, we started with this skit and this question of how do you pray? And Jesus answers those questions of how do we pray? Um, also, you know, how do we kind of enter into that relationship? And, you know, how do we connect with this all-powerful God? And I just want to leave us with one little story from the Old Testament. It's a beautiful story. You know this story. It's uh, the story of Samuel, right? And Samuel's life started with prayer. His mother, Hannah, couldn't have children. And she prays the Lord, you know, and the Lord hears her prayer and grants her this son, Samuel, and Samuel's name basically means heard of God. But Samuel's own life is this beautiful picture of prayer because, you know, he, he grows up in the tabernacle. He grows up under the guidance of the priest Eli. And as the story goes, one night, and this is Samuel chapter 3, one night uh, he is sleeping at the door to the tabernacle and God approaches him and God calls out his name, Samuel, Samuel, and he, Samuel gets up, he goes to uh, um, Eli and says, did you call me? And Eli says, you know, like, go back to sleep, you know, I'm tired. He goes back. This happens a few times. Finally, Eli gets wise and realizes that God is speaking to Samuel. God is speaking to Samuel. And he gives him some instructions. And the last time God calls Samuel's name, he says, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel gets up and he says, Speak, Master, speak Adonai, for your servant is listening. Your servant is listening. And then we see from that moment on that God begins to have a dialogue with Samuel. And God keeps meeting with Samuel often. And God had not been meeting with pretty much anyone up for a long time. And he keeps meeting with Samuel. And he keeps giving Samuel words of wisdom. And he raises Samuel up. And he makes Samuel into this amazing prophet of God who is completely blessed and exuding and pouring out the blessings and the instruction and the wisdom and the power of God to everyone who's around him. And it just reminds me, you know, like in our prayer life, you know, just a few things here from the stories. One is that God is the initiator of the relationship. God wants to have a relationship with you more than you want to have a relationship with Him. And He knows you by name. And He's calling you by name. And we need to be like Samuel who say, you know what? You are the master. You are the creator of the universe. You are our Abba Father. And I'm just your servant. I'm your son or I'm your daughter. And I want to listen to you. I want to hear your will. I want to do your will. I want to see your will happen in my life. And you know what? You will be a blessing to others. Um, and it's going to be great, you know? And it starts with prayer. It starts with a conversation between you 
in your father, you and your father. And I just want to challenge you, do you want that? Do you want that? And if you do, if the answer is yes, start today. Just have those conversations with God. Personally, honestly, privately, open your heart to Him. I'm just gonna end with a word of prayer, then we're gonna be done, okay? So let's pray. Lord, just thank you for who you are again. Just thank you that you're this glorious Father, Lord, that you're so, so good to us. Lord, we're so undeserving, Lord. We don't deserve your grace, but you say come boldly, come confidently. So we're coming, Lord. We wanna uh, receive from you. We wanna have your will just poured out into our lives, Lord. We wanna take you fully, Lord. We want uh, just to have your joy fill us right now, Lord. As you bless us, Lord, help us to not hold on to it and just be selfish with it, but let us release it and be a blessing to others. So we just pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen, amen, amen. We sing together, Father in heaven. Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, lead us not into temptation, God deliver. Sir!
Okay, Sea Life family, thank you guys for hanging with us this whole service. Hope you were blessed, hope you were encouraged. Let's move forward into the week. One little reminder, at 11.30 we're gonna have our City Light Connect. So please do log on, link is below. Uh, it's just a wonderful time of just chatting and staying in touch with one another, but also praying together. So let's do that. Let's pray together, encourage one another, and just lift our hearts to the Father together. So please do join 1130, okay? God bless you guys. We would love to welcome you for some online fellowship after this service. At 1130, we will connect via the link provided. This time is set aside to chat, check in with each other, and pray for one another. We'd love for you to join us. See you soon.